The Life and Sad Ending of Cleo Moore. Cleo Moore was born Cleuna Moore on October 31st, 1929 in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Her parents were deeply involved in democratic politics. Politics in Louisiana was an all-consuming passion with a lot of families in the 1920s and 1930s. Moore began her trek to stardom when she participated in school plays in high school. When she was just 15 years old, Moore wed Palmer Long, son of the late Huey Kingfish Long in 1944. Palmer's father had been one of the movers and shakers in Louisiana politics for years, first serving as governor and then the United States Senate. He was assassinated in 1935 in the state capitol building. The marriage was doomed to fail, having lasted a mere six weeks. After Moore finished high school, she moved with her family to California, where her father was anticipating the end of World War II and the building boom that was expected to follow. Once in sunny California, it did not take long to get discovered. She was spotted by an RKO executive and was convinced to take a screen test, and she passed. Her first film was a rather nondescript film called Congo Bill in 1948. After that fiasco, Moore went back to work at her family's building business and did some modeling. Two years later, in 1950, the shapely blonde appeared in a western entitled Rio Grande Patrol in 1950. She received fifth billing in the movie that went nowhere. That year proved to be too busy for Moore as she appeared in five other films. In The Bright Leaf in 1950, a film about the tobacco industry, was a well-received one even though she had only a small part. Moore in Gambling House in 1950 was somewhat of a personal breakthrough. Instead of having basically unknowns as her co-stars, Moore had Victor Mature and William Bendix. Hard as it was to break into films that really grabbed the public's attention, Moore seemed to be destined to stay in B-movie roles for the balance of her career. She did appear in a crime drama film called On Dangerous Ground in 1951 with Ida Lupino and Robert Ryan, but only had a minor part. For an actress who had a wonderful talent, she seemed to be picked because of how her physical attributes played to the screen. That seemed secondary to the Mongols of the studio. She was very beautiful, but Moore wanted them to look past that and see the talent that she possessed. In 1954, Moore appeared in two more box office bombs, The Other Woman and Bait. The following year, she made two more films, Hold Back Tomorrow, which was termed Strange, and Woman's Prison. Although a second-class movie, it fared well at the box office because of the subject matter and more. Other than that, it did not have a lot going on for it. In 1957, Moore starred in her final film, along with her sister, Maria Leah, called Hit and Run. She had starred billing, but it was another box office bomb. Then, Moore left motion picture industries forever. She married a real estate tycoon, Herbert Heffler, in 1961 and settled down to a life of being a socialite in Damascus City. They had a daughter named Deborah Lee Helfter, born in 1963. Sadly, less than a week before her 44th birthday, Moore died of a heart attack on October 25th, 1973 in Inglewood, California. Following her sudden death, she was interred in Inglewood Park Cemetery in Inglewood, California. To her legions of fans, she remained their favorite sex symbol of the 1950s, and others languished knowing that her talent could have sent her into loftier heights.